All right, I think what makes a great photo more than it looking aesthetically pleasing and visually pleasing is the stories behind the photos. What happened behind the scenes, sort of just that personal connection that we have with certain shots, which you don't often get to see when you're scrolling through images online, which is why I've decided to start a new series on the channel called Photo Stories, where I will share a series of my favorite photos from different projects or trips and kind of give you guys a little bit of the backstory and context, some of the things that happen behind the scenes when capturing each of these shots and basically just telling you why I like them and my personal connection to each of the photos. Today we're going to be going over a few of my favorite shots from a trip that I took to Saudi Arabia. Now if you follow my work you've probably seen a lot of these shots from Saudi Arabia on my Instagram and I've also uploaded a couple of videos from that trip here on YouTube but today I thought I would pick three of my favorite photos from that trip and give you a little bit more of an insight into what actually went on behind the scenes and why these are probably some of my favorite photos that I've taken. All right, so the first shot that I wanna share with you today is this drone photo of me and Jack in a Land Cruiser. This was shot at F2.8 with an ISO of 100 and a shutter of 1 800th of a second. The fact that this shot was so hard to execute is what makes it such a good photo and such a memorable photo for me. We were actually part of a desert safari group. There were a few other cars and groups of people that were on this tour with us but the reason they're not in the shot is not because we photoshopped them out but because we were getting our driver to do all these crazy moves and go all these places to get content we actually fell so far behind the rest of the group that they were gone and out of sight and we were pretty much lost in the middle of the desert. Our driver was actually really cool and he was letting us play tunes and I think he was really into us capturing this content which is why he was super down to be doing all this stuff for us. He was doing like fish tails and donuts in the sand to create dust and he was having a blast with us but it got to a point where he was like okay we got to speed up so we can catch up to the rest of the group because they're that far behind so that's why we're isolated in this photo right here and it's just us but I think it makes for a pretty awesome photo because we're literally by ourselves in this grand landscape with all these ancient canyons around us and I just don't think that this shot would have been the same if there was a bunch of other SUVs in the photo as well. I mean, it could have been cool, but I like the fact that we've got a main subject in the middle of our frame here. So as our driver was trying to catch up to the rest of the group, I'm trying to get this photo and we're just bumping and flying all over the place. And it was so difficult to actually frame this and stick my hand out the window to try and get the shot, but we managed to pull it off. And after I actually got the shot, we were going so fast and we'd gone so far from where I actually had the drone up that I needed to put it in sports mode to get it back in time and bring it down while the car was moving. And as I brought it down, I forgot to take it out of sports mode. So it came straight down into my hands and actually cut up two or three of my fingers on my right hand. And I just started bleeding. And when we caught up to the rest of the group, they probably thought we got lost and got attacked. But um, that was the first time I had a drone related injury. And it's actually been the last time I've had a drone related injury. So if you've ever caught a drone and got your fingers stuck in the propellers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It hurts like a You've probably seen a few of these tomb style photos that I've shared from Saudi, but this is a different one that I actually haven't posted anywhere, I don't think. This was shot on the Canon 1DX, 24 millimeter, F2.8, ISO 100, and 32 hundredth of a second. So this was taken in the same desert area, Alula. And these are all thousand year old tombs that just are laid out in the desert everywhere you look. So all the cliff faces have these tombs carved into them. And I believe the size of the tomb and how extravagant it is has some sort of relation to how important that person being buried there was. So this is quite a large tomb. I'm guessing this was someone of importance, maybe royalty or something like that. And if you drove through the desert and through that landscape, we saw a lot of other cliffs and I guess just rock faces with little tombs etched into the side of them, which I'm guessing just would have been for everyday people. Walking through this landscape, I just got an overwhelming sense of history and I couldn't help but think of all the things that would have taken place thousands of years ago in that exact spot. We were told that this area I think is UNESCO listed and not many people at the time had been able to visit it because it had been closed off to the general population. So I felt really privileged and quite unique actually being able to visit this spot. So I think the 
thing that I love most about this is it literally looks like something from another world. It looks like it could be Photoshop. And shooting on the 24 to 70 gives us a really nice compressed look where we can actually have our subject below the tomb and we get to see both subjects simultaneously in the same shot, um, both in focus, and it just gives a really nice sense of scale. With all the history and all the things that must have taken place there thousands and thousands of years ago, being so isolated and being one of the first people to be able to go to this spot and actually capture this was a really, really unique experience. It's something that's quite unique to this part of the world and something that I've never experienced and might not ever get to experience again. So for me, again, this is another reason why this is one of my favorite photos from this series here. All right, moving on to the last image that I'm gonna share with you today. We took the Land Cruisers out to a place called Elephant Rock, which is this shot here. It was again taken at f2.8 with an ISO of 100, and this time with a shutter of one over 500. So the reason that this place is called Elephant Rock is obviously because of its shape, and this is actually a naturally formed structure out again in the Alula Desert in Saudi. And I'm told that this is the result of millions of years of wind and water erosion, which obviously puts a huge amount of history and importance onto this. I knew that I really wanted to capture this location Location and I was getting anxious because on the way there, I could see that the sun was setting and it was the light was slowly disappearing. And I was hoping to actually get there for sunset and have a bit of light still available to get some cool shots. So as soon as we pulled up, I could see the sun was literally just about to creep behind the horizon. So I hopped out, got the drone straight up in the sky and managed to fire away a few shots. And they ended up turning out perfectly because the sun had actually come down and was shining straight through the middle of that, I guess, horseshoe-like structure, creating these huge long shadows before it disappeared. We literally had probably only a minute and a half of light to actually get these photos. So all the photos I got at this location were shot within that one to two minute time period before the light disappeared. And I guess the landscape just went kind of flat and dark from there on, but super lucky to be able to get these shots. The reason that we were coming to this location was because we were having a desert safari camp. So there was a camp set up with um, traditional Saudi teas and coffee, and there were lots of dates and raisins, which is another traditional food out there. So we had all those by a little fireplace sitting under the stars. And there were some local kids and people that lived on that site there who had camels and all the rest of it. And we actually got the chance to ride the camels, sit down, have some tea and coffee and talk to some of the locals. And it, yeah, it was just a really cool experience. And again, something that I'll never forget because of this photo and just the overall experience of being there in that time. And I guess the great thing about a lot of these shots is none of them were planned. I had no preconceived idea of what I wanted to capture. It was all very run and gun and in the moment. And I guess these photos are a result of that time period and a memory that I'm always gonna have from that day and from this particular trip right here. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed this first episode of Photo Stories. Let me know if this is something that you would like to see happen weekly. I am hoping to try and make it a weekly thing and let me know what sort of things you would like to know about my photos and what sort of things you'd like me to share in future episodes. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I will see you in the next one.